Hello and welcome to the starting Admech series, the series where we go from your first purchase to your first 2000 point army list and everything in between for the Adeptus Mechanicus forces in the 9th edition codex. In this video I'd like to make a shorter video addressing some of the changes that we saw within the FAQ of July 30th, 2021 for the Admech. To begin with, the FAQ has changed quite a few different things, and all those changes were nerfs to different parts of the Admech that do change how some of the series has to be interpreted due to the changes to some of the abilities and units that we've already discussed. As such, I'll put this video earlier in the series so that people can watch it and understand the differences of when I talk about things like the troop choice and the HQ choices in relation to some of these units, that those things may no longer hold true, and the same goes for different Forge Worlds that I've discussed in the past. That being said, I don't think the changes are that significant, and I think Games Workshop has committed to consistently having a rather reserved approach when it comes to changing the different rules of different armies to assure that no army becomes unplayable after their units have been reduced in power a little bit. And with that being said, let's take a look at some of these changes. To begin with, the first change they have done is to the Lucius Forge world, being that of Solar Blessing, where they change the wording so that the Solar Blessing no longer stacks with light cover benefits, meaning that you can only ever benefit from one or the other. This is overall a minor change, and it's the only change that Lucius received at this time. And while this does reduce the power of some of their survivability, don't forget that this still works with the Doctrina Imperative that increases the save, as that is not a benefit of light cover. And in addition to that, usually if you're going into Lucius, you are doing it in part for this ability, but at the same time, the Relic and the Warlord trait are significantly better and remain unchanged, though some other changes have reduced the power level of the Relic and the Warlord trait, although not directly, and we'll see what those changes are very shortly. If I had to make a judgment on where Lucius would be at this time as a result of this change, I would still put them as one of the top Forge Worlds, if not the best Forge World, it's simply that they've seen a minor power reduction to some of their consistency, although at the end of the day, I would still go into Lucius very happily were things like the Solar Flare and the Luminescent Blessing, as well as their Stratagem. And that being the case, I don't think we're going to see a shortage of Lucius. I simply think we're going to maybe see some of the other Forge Worlds showing up a little bit more. Following the change to the Lucius Forge World, there was one change done to the General Stratagems, where they changed the stratagem known as acquisition at any cost, changing it so that the unit has to be holy within 6 inches of the objective, as well as restricting it to once per battle. Normally, I'm not the biggest fan of abilities that affect the morale test or combat attrition tests, though at the same time, this ability could have been rather strong, and it has become significantly more restrictive, as all of a sudden you can't just be touching the objective, you actually have to fit all of your units within that 6 inch radius of that objective, and that can be sometimes complicated with some of the large units we have, whether that's because because of the number of models or because of the large base sizes and that some more models do have. And in addition to that, you can only use it once per game, so you have to use the stratagem rather wisely when you do use it. That being said, I think it's perfectly fine, and I don't believe the Skitari are going to lose a significant amount of power as a result of the stratagem being changed the way it is. Maybe this is just my bias against morale tests and combat attrition tests, though in this situation, I think it'll be perfectly fine as it is. Moving on to the changes to different stratagems, we'll look at the two more impactful changes that have occurred within this FAQ. The first change being to that of Enriched Rounds, which has seen a significant power decrease in two different manners. The first one being that it no longer automatically wounds the non-vehicle targets on a 4+, but rather now the Vanguard will wound automatically on an unmodified roll of 5 plus to hit. This actually changes the number of wounds you make successfully rather drastically, as all of a sudden in a block of 20 Skitari, you go from on average making half your hits convert into wounds to all of a sudden only one third of them automatically wounding. To put this in context, a large block of 20 Vanguard would have made on average 30 wounds successfully with this ability alone. Now on the other hand, that same block of 20 Vanguard Skitari would only be making 20 wounds as a result. This is a decrease of 10 wounds total, and when you take that into consideration, all of a sudden, the output of the Vanguard has drastically decreased. At the end of the day, this is probably a good change, as the Vanguard were potentially oppressive to some unit types that did not have the vehicle keyword, specifically large character models, such as Mortarian, who all of a sudden went from being very playable to almost unplayable overnight because he lacked the vehicle keyword, unlike something like the Silent King, who already had that keyword to begin with. This still gives you the ability to take out a Mortarian in one round, however now the success rate has 
been reduced significantly, and all of a sudden, some of those more powerful models will start seeing play again, although I think Admechs still have plenty of ways of dealing with them, it's just that they have to commit more resources now in order to deal with those threats, which is how it should be, so this is overall a positive change. Another nerf that Enrich Rounds experienced is going from one command point at all times to costing two command points if there are 11 or more models within the unit. This means you'll be using two command points to activate the stratagem under optimal conditions. This may not seem like a big difference to some people initially, though keep in mind, Admech are a very command point hungry army to begin with, and oftentimes start their games with very few command points. Combine this with the fact that things like Galvan and Kvali also cost two command points and your other stratagems that you would like to use, you all of a sudden run into a situation where you can find that that extra command point makes you run out of command points way more quickly than you expected, especially if you're trying to use these stratagems every single turn throughout the game in order to optimize the output of your units. And this will potentially lead to more decision making when using some of these stratagems, although I still think Enrich Rounds is a perfectly fine and acceptable stratagem that will continue keeping Vanguard within play. So keep this in mind when watching the troops video, as Vanguard have lost a substantial amount of their power, although they are still perfectly fine and playable. It's important to keep into context that the Vanguard are still very durable under Lucius, even with the nerf to Solar Blessing, as well as having a ton of firepower and being incredibly mobile thanks to things like the Solar Flare. A lot of times, Enrich Rounds would just delete entire units, and while it can still do that in many situations, a large part to the Vanguard is how durable they are, in addition to how able they are to put out that much firepower, and I don't think their durability has gone down. That being said, if we look at the Rangers, we can see changes have been made to their stratagem as well, which was known as Galvanic Volley, and the Rangers were already overtaking the Vanguard in many situations, although there was quite a bit of diversity of both Rangers and Vanguard within army lists. And if we look at the changes to Galvanic Volley, we see that the change has been made so that the Galvanic Rifles of the Rangers are no longer considered to be rapid fire, but rather they retain their heavy profile and go up to heavy three shots. I wouldn't really call this change a nerf to the stratagem, as it's a bit too different in terms of how it behaves. To think about this change, you have to think about it this way. You can no longer use a stratagem to reduce some of the heavy weapon penalties that units may suffer, although all of a sudden, you don't have to be within half range in order to benefit from the stratagem, and you can add one additional shot to all of your rangers, even at their maximum range, She makes this better in some circumstances, as you no longer have to get in as close in order to utilize this ability. In fact, when you consider how many ways the rangers have to increase their range, as well as how many abilities can interact with this, this actually may have gotten better than it was before, considering that they can make use of this much more earlier in the game in order to put out quite a lot of firepower. As such, I think the rangers will continue to overtake the vanguard and we'll probably see much more rangers within games than we will vanguard going into the future. Although that being said, once again, you still probably want a mix of them in order to have the ability to access both this and enrich rounds, even though enrich rounds had seen a significant nerf. And one other thing I would like to add is that, unfortunately, this inadvertently nerfs Forge Worlds such as Agrippina, as all of a sudden, the benefit for being in half range is significantly less. While on the other hand, it benefits Forge Worlds like Mars because all of a sudden, you have that additional shot at a much longer range than you did before, making it easier to trigger those mortal wounds off of your Wrath of Mars stratagem. Once again, I wouldn't say this ability was nerfed, Although it is much weaker within half range, it's still incredibly powerful at a distance and has a little bit more utility now than it did before at the beginning of the game, where that additional firepower may matter more than it does in the middle or the end of the game when that rapid fire would normally come online. I wish they had found a better way of making this ability function because I think the change is detrimental to some of the weaker forge worlds while being beneficial to some of the better ones, as well as not necessarily solving the problem that the stratagem created to begin with. It'll be interesting to see how this new stratagem plays out and if it ends up being reverted or changed once again in order to bring it into a better power line because as it stands now, I think it might be better than it was before in some situations that can lead to just a skewed games as the previous incarnation did. And finally, we have one last change which occurred to the Iron Strider Bellastari and the Sidonian Dragoons. Both these units no longer have the core keyword and this means they can no longer benefit from things like the Skitari Martial Aura or the Dominus Aura. And as a result of this, they are somewhat significantly less accurate, although they still have access to Doctrinas and can benefit from the Doctrina ability on the Skitari Martial. Though being locked out from the Exemplar Relic on the Martial or any of the Skitari Warlord traits is a bit of a big deal. 
We also can no longer benefit from any of the Holy Order abilities, as well as many other relics, such as the Solar Flare or the Warlord trait Luminescent Blessing. And this in part was what I was referring to, to changes that made Lucius a little bit weaker. Though that being said, I don't think the Iron Strider is going anywhere anytime soon, as it still has a very durable profile with a very powerful weapon, giving you two last cannon shots that have a D3 plus 3 damage profile. And gaining all of this on a 75 point body, as well as one that's incredibly mobile, is incredibly good, and I think they'll continue to see play until they get a points increase and even then they'll still probably see play although in smaller numbers because those last cans are very good and many armies wish they could have access to such firepower on such a platform as the iron strider the sidonian dragoon on the other hand has taken a much bigger hit as all of a sudden it can't get some of the charge benefits and other such abilities that would have made it a little bit more playable a part of me really wishes that the iron strider had the core keyword removed but the dragoon retained its core keyword simply to give it a little more power and make it a little bit more playable consider Considering we have not seen any Dragoons performing currently, but we have seen plenty of Iron Striders make it to the top tables in almost every single Adeptus Mechanicus list, if not every single Adeptus Mechanicus list that has made the top 4. It would have been interesting if they had approached this a little bit differently, but I also understand from a consistency standpoint they had to do this in order to keep things simpler and not confuse people, as otherwise they would have had some issues. Once again, I think this is part of the issue with something like the core keyword. As well, I like the idea of the core keyword overall. I think it's a bit limiting and has certain issues that will need to be addressed in the future due to the issues it creates within implementation and complexity when we look at various armies that now have experience with the core keyword. In either case, we'll take a deeper look into the Iron Striders and Sidonian Dragoons in the future once we look at the fast attack choices, and at that point we'll address them as their new incarnation instead of the previous one that had the core keyword. The most important takeaway from this is that the Skitari Marshal and a lot of the Warlord traits as well as Warlord Relics can no longer benefit the Iron Striders, making them a bit of a different unit than previously discussed in passing in some of the other videos. And though I still think the Iron Striders are perfectly fine, and I still think they'll see quite a lot of play in their new incarnation without the core keyword. Although they will be less accurate and less potent, they'll still be able to put out more than enough damage. At the end of the day, I do like that Games Workshop is taking a subtle approach to this, and it appears that they're willing to make multiple changes across a period of time, instead of massive sweeping changes at the beginning when they see an issue such as this. Maybe these changes will get Admech to be more in line with other armies, though I do think another set of nerfs will be coming in the future, as Admechs still seem like they'll be very powerful and very potent within the tournament scene, and a lot of these changes probably don't address some of the key issues that the Codex has that puts it a bit over the top. Now that being said, I do think it's good that they addressed some of the issues such as the troops being incredibly powerful and things like the Iron Striders and Lucius being very strong. I do think they targeted a lot of the correct units, I just don't think they did enough and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another one of these updates sooner than later as a result of this because Admech will retain most of their power going into the future. That being said, I'm willing to be proven wrong and it very well may be possible that Admech find themselves in a world where they are very good but not oppressive as they are now. If that is the case, I'll be perfectly happy and content with these changes. Though that being said, I still believe they're still a little bit above where I think a lot of players would expect them to be. And as always, if you've enjoyed the content, like and subscribe as it really does help the channel out. And if you get the opportunity, please do share the channel as that not only massively helps the channel, but also helps the people who may discover it and benefit from the content. I would also like to give a quick shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome people. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. And regardless if you're a patron or not, thank you for watching and have a great day. See you next time. Bye.